All right, let's get started. So welcome to uh, hiring managers. Um, welcome to hiring managers expectations for new graduates. Good day. My name is Marie Muldowney and I'm the manager director at CSI, a Moody's analytics company. I'm pleased to welcome you to this webinar. If you're interested in a career in financial services, this webinar will provide you insight into how to navigate your way most successfully to a role. And we'll outline how CSI can help you if you're on the job market and not currently employed in the financial services industry. Before we begin, let me give you some housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded. Any ratings, financial reporting analysis, projections, and other observations constituting part of the information conveyed are and must be construed solely as statements of opinion and not statements of fact or recommendations to purchase, sell, or hold any securities. We ask that no one record the session without Moody's explicit written permission. And lastly, no one has permission to quote any of the comments made or the questions asked by the panelists or the webinar audience. All members of the audience are currently on mute. If you have a question, please type it in the Q&A box. Access to the box is found on the lower right-hand side of your screen. So I'd like to get started first of all, next slide, by introducing to you Rui Barreto. And Rui Barreto will in turn introduce our panelists and host the session. So Rui is the Director of Business Development and responsible for corporate relations uh, with several of our key corporate clients. He has occupied several roles in the financial services industry, including financial services representative, where he started, branch manager, financial planner, and mortgage specialist. So I'm going to turn the session over to Rui. Over to you, Rui. Thank you, Marie. Um, before I, uh, I introduce our panelists, I just want to give you a quick overview of uh, how the flow of our presentation is going to uh, proceed with. Um, we have in the beginning half of our presentation key questions that uh, we have basically pulled from the industry. These are questions that we traditionally get asked and uh, we are going to be providing to our panelists for responses. Uh, while they are responding, we do encourage you to provide your own questions by clicking the Q&A uh, little uh, uh, icon down at the bottom and submitting your own questions. Uh, they can either be follow-up questions to uh, the ones asked, or they can be completely new questions. Um, what we will do is at the later half of our presentation, we will try to get through as many of those questions as possible. The questions that we're not able to address, we will follow up in a post that will be linked back to this, uh, this uh, invite and session, and we will provide responses there. Uh, so without any further ado, I am going to jump right in and ask our, our first question. Um, what I'm going to do is ask this question to uh, both Lena. Oh, sorry, my apology. Let me introduce our panelists. <laughs> sorry, our uh, panelists today will consist of Jennifer Livingstone. She is a senior manager of training at RBC Wealth Canada. We have Lena Cherian, who is a senior manager talent acquisition at CIBC. And we're also joined by Lorraine Lee, uh, also a senior manager of talent acquisition at CIBC. Going into our first question, what I'm going to do is um, ask both Jennifer and Lena to, uh, to address this question as they do cover two areas. Lena, I'm gonna post this question to you first. Uh, what entry level opportunities are available for students to enter the financial services industry? And if we can go to the next slide. Thank you, Rui, and hello everyone. Um, if you're looking for a start, uh, we have different entry level opportunities at, uh, at the bank. And I will start off with the CSR opportunity. Um, CSR, the customer service rep uh, role, um, it does not require any accreditation. Um, mostly we hire part-time uh, for this role. This is mostly to do with um, folks who are, um, you know, they are, they are students. They're looking for part-time opportunities anywhere from 15 to 20 hours per week. Um, and um, they are pretty much the first point of contact in the banking center. So some of the attributes of 
a customer services uh, representative would be creating that first client experience. You are the first person they see um, at the banking center. So you are um, trying to understand what the needs are. You're trying to understand um, uh, what the client is asking for and, and take ownership when clients are experiencing a problem and, and take the appropriate steps to resolve it. So for example, um, you might get a client asking for mortgages and you are in a position to direct that inquiry to a mortgage advisor. Um, and if, if it is about a complex deal, it's a financial advisor. So the CSR pretty much is that first point of contact where the client sees this individual first. Um, a lot of our um, CSRs do transition into FSR roles, so that takes me next to, to the, um, the other entry level role that we have at the bank, it's the financial sales rep um, representative. Um, our FSRs support the personal banking and business clients. They work together with a committed team in a dynamic banking center environment. Um, the FSR cultivates a deep understanding of our clients' needs. They recommend simple, um, personalized solutions that will help our clients achieve their financial goals. Now, I can tell you, we all have been clients once upon a time somewhere, and we liked that attention. We liked that, um, you know, um, how quickly the problem was resolved or how quickly we had a turnaround. That is this individual. Um, so some of the attributes that we look in this person is, you know, um, this person's caring, they're goal oriented, they're, they're good, they're a good listener, they're a good communicator. Um, and this person would, the FSR would uh, proactively build um, and uh, a lasting client relationship. You know, they will welcome a walk-in client into a banking center um, if the CSR is not there. Um, it, they they manage the needs of personal and business needs uh, for the client. Um, so this person is very passionate about providing advice to meet clients' needs. Um, they are comfortable, you know, engaging uncovering opportunities for the clients. So um, it is a role where, um, where you, you get to, uh, it's not just about borrowing or investing advice, it's more about developing a plan for each client's needs and their most important life events. It's about building relationship on trust, teamwork and accountability. So going back to the, um, uh, the, the slide that we see, the only difference between a universal banker and the FSR, they both need accreditation. So it could be an IF, um, a C certification or a CSE. Uh, but the only difference between both roles is that um, the universal banker is a hybrid role. They are great communicators. They are pretty much um, available in the lobby as well. They're mostly, you, in, uh, they, you would find them more in a digital banking center and an FSR would be a regular banking center. That's the only difference, but both roles need accreditation. They are full-time roles at the bank. Um, and what you see on the right side of the slide is the, so the FSR role is the entry level to all the other roles that you see. Those are some growth opportunities. We have seen people move into in the past where you've moved into an FA role or a financial planner role or even a mortgage advisor role because you, you just love to talk to clients. You love to find um, solution to, to making their dreams uh, a reality, buying a home, a new home. So it all depends on what works best for you and what would be um, the best option when you move forward. So FSR would be an entry level to those roles that you see. Um, Jennifer, over to you. The next slide. Thanks, Lena. Thanks, Rui. And again, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm really excited to get an opportunity to talk to you a little bit about our wealth management careers. I'm going to mainly focus on the associate uh, financial advisor, people who work for our investment advisors, uh, typically housed at RBC Dominion Securities. Under Wealth Management Canada umbrella, we do have three different key areas. We have RBC Dominion Securities, we have a counseling business, which is um, called PH&N Investment Council, and then we also have Royal Trust, so a traditional trust, uh, so a state and trust specialist type roles. Most of our associates come to us with a varying amount of backgrounds. They don't necessarily have, uh, you know, certain finance degrees or, or anything like that. 
accreditation though is important in these roles. Having the Canadian Securities Course as well as the CAPH, the Conducts and Practice, Practices Handbook, will set you apart from other candidates who don't have these designations. They are important for all of our roles that are housed at Dominion Securities. Most people who join these roles start supporting advisors. That can look anything like helping build a service plan, doing administration, opening accounts, uh, working in marketing, eventually leading to some wealth planning and trading. We find many of our associates grow their career within their advisory team. As our advisors' businesses grow and practices grow, there's opportunities for many of our associates to get more involved in the wealth planning, get more involved in the investment planning. And so many of the other designations can be very important. I think I just wanted to highlight that for many people, it's really understanding what your interest lies within this industry. And I think that then finding the appropriate designation starts to really help put those pieces together for you. I think lastly, our investment advisors, just really quickly to highlight, uh, most of them are hired again with a varying amount of backgrounds that come to us from all different places, but and that licensing, that core licensing in terms of the CSC, the CPH, and they also need to mandatorily complete the wealth management essential courses are very important, uh, well, and mandatory for those roles. So if that's the role that you're looking more towards, you'd wanna make sure you ac uh, accomplish all of those three designations. Thanks. Next slide for us. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Lena. Um, our next question is, uh, can you provide an overview of the recruitment process? Uh, given that we're kind of focusing on two areas of, uh, of the uh, financial services industry, both retail and wealth, I would like to uh, direct this question to uh, Lena. And then Jennifer, if you can uh, also jump in and provide the, uh, the overview from the wealth side. Perfect, thanks. Rui, I'll start first. Um, all our active job requisitions are on our CIBC career website. So if you can visit the website and look at roles that are open and available, the application process is very simple. You apply online. Um, the next step is the recruiters review and screen those resumes. And, um, and if qualified, um, you do get a call, a phone screen set up by the recruiter at a convenient time. And if that goes well, we proceed into hiring manager interview. And if everything's okay there, we proceed with um, offer, um, you know, screening checks, all of that. So it's a pretty simple recruitment process. Um, Lorraine, did you wanna add anything to that? I think I'd, I would just emphasize what's really important as well is that um, because your resume really is the first thing that a recruiter sees at any organization, it's really important that your resume is incredibly uh, clear. Uh, we're not looking at a chapter book, you know, one or two pages is absolutely perfect. Uh, remember that font size is uh, important as well. So don't, you know, have an eight font. Um, you want to have a font that actually people can read. It's simplified. It's bullet. Um, and then the other thing that's really important about a resume is it has to be accurate and it has to be truthful. Uh, if you are ever offered a role within one of the, you know, the FIs, uh, we do go through a fairly detailed security check and we will define people if their resume is not accurate. So um, those are definitely some tips I would add. Jennifer, anything else? Yeah, I, I would say I would highlight RBC would have many of the same procedures. You know, our hiring site, you can get to from the Royal Bank site, but for specific wealth management career site uh, as well, uh, that are all about our roles. I would say the only difference I wanted to highlight is, is because our teams are very entrepreneurial and our advisors work with their specific um, associate advisors or associates on their team, they are very invested in the hiring process. So our branches work very closely with our recruiter to find the right candidate for the right advisory team. So it would be maybe a bit of a longer interview process with multiple people, because again, you're working with somebody specifically very closely and they wanna make sure that the fit is right for the team. But all the other points I would say, I would echo for sure. I think over to you, Rui, for next question. Sorry, Nitika, can we move to the next question? 
our next question is, what are some gaps and expectations before and after joining the Canadian financial services industry? And again, I'm going to post this question to uh, Jennifer and, and Lena, uh, as they do cover two different areas. And uh, I believe the response would probably be slightly different between the two, uh, starting with Jennifer, I guess. Okay, thanks, Ruby. Yeah, I wanted to highlight that uh, things we've heard from people that we've hired in the past were not understanding that you don't have to have a finance degree to join the wealth management business. Having a college diploma or university degree is obviously very important and, and key to, for success, but it can be from any kind of discipline. Really, the designations are what will really help a little bit more on the wealth side, especially given that it's a regulatory requirement for many of our roles. We're really looking for people that have uh, specialties in client service, problem solving, be adaptable to change. You know, our industry is changing constantly. So people that are comfortable with technology or regulatory type changes can be really important. So anything you can do to highlight those types of activities would be key in a resume or an interview process. I think before you even apply, learn something about our business that's a, maybe it's a little different than core financial services industries. We tend to deal with high net worth clients, again, in that entrepreneurial type culture. So I challenge each of you to take a peek at what we have in terms of your location in your city, in terms of our branches versus, um, say, a Royal Bank branch, a little bit different. Once people are hired, I think they don't really realize how much administration um, that is going to happen in this industry. And it is such a key thing for our clients. Again, we're highly regulated. We have quite a lot of administration that has to get done on a regular basis for all of our clients to serve their needs well. So being great at details, being good at admin, I think are really some key things to highlight that maybe people weren't totally expecting when they joined the industry. Can we serve our clients and we have the opportunity to build deep relationships with our clients. So anything that you can show that you've successfully built um, great relationships with people in the past, I think would also go well to, to serving you well in this industry. Lena or Lorraine, anything you wanna add? Um, Jennifer, you, you nailed it. I would just add a few more to everything that you just mentioned. Um, everything in um, retail or wealth, um, any activity, uh, that you talk about in this industry revolves around clients, revolves around what their needs are. It could be your day-to-day -day banking, it could be a bigger portfolio or an affluent client. At the end of the day, you're looking at taking care of their needs, um, the client satisfaction, uh, problem solving, attention to detail, everything that Jennifer alluded to. A um, few of the things that um, I would highlight here is um, understand your business um, and see what else can you do here to be on top of this. So are you be understanding market trends? Are we understanding market intel? Um, what are some of the things that others are doing? What, what, how can we, um, you know, um, better our services to our clients. So um, having, I've seen sometimes when um, talking to hiring managers, the gap is, oh, they don't know anything about the market. So what else can we do to know more, learn more? Um, you know, so, so those were a few of the points that I could, I, I thought of here. Lorraine, did you wanna add anything at all? Yeah, I, th I think what's really important is the roles that Jennifer, uh, Lena and I have been discussing are very much client facing roles. Uh, so, you know, you have to like people, right? Um, if you're not really a people person, um, maybe you're not kind of outgoing, you prefer to be, you know, looking at numbers. Uh, there are different opportunities at uh, banks. Uh, but the roles we're talking about really are very much client facing. So you want to be able to uh, connect with people. Um, I think um, one gap that we've noticed uh, with our hiring managers is we're so, um, you know, stuck on being with our, our, our phone and texting. Um, the, what we're losing is the art of connecting and communicating in person. Um, I, I realize we're in a pandemic right now, but, you know, eventually we're going to be back in face-to-face. -face. Uh, your ability to hold a conversation, uh, look at someone in the eye, I think are very important skills um, and I think if you're of my generation, when you didn't have all this luxury of the technology, uh, that's just, just how, we, uh, how the world rolled. So uh, connecting with people, having good communication skills are really important. Okay, over to you, Rui. 
Yeah, so um, our next question, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask this question, and I'm also going to come back to some of the uh, questions that we've been receiving, as it kind of tends to resonate with this with this media question. Uh, this question I'm going to be directing to Lorraine, but uh, I will also ask that Jennifer and Lena also jump in uh, and uh, provide any feedback. And the question is, how can students stand out amongst other applicants? Okay, so I guess the first thing, you know, we, we covered uh, a bit earlier and that is your resume. Um, the two areas I didn't cover on the resume is, please don't put your photo on a resume um, and please do not put any personal information on your resume as well. Um, I don't wanna know about your ethnicity, your height, any of that information, uh, please uh, uh, exclude that. So first off is your resume. You wanna make sure your resume is good. Second of all, uh, when you do uh, have an opportunity to have that interview, um, you wanna make sure that um, you speak clearly, uh, you focus on the actual uh, questions that are being asked. Uh, you don't wanna go off onto tangent and into a huge story uh, storyboard. Um, the other thing that's important is if you're not sure, if you don't know how to answer that question, or if they ask you a question and you don't have that experience, it's okay, just be honest and just say, I don't have that specific experience, but based on um, you know, maybe my volunteer work that I've done, I've been able to manage cash that way, right? So you know, I think a lot of people, depending on where you are in your life, especially if you've graduated you know, or you're you know, just a young talent, um, maybe you haven't had a lot, lot of um, opportunities to work, you know, obviously in full-time roles. So remember your volunteer experience is really critical. You know, whether you were volunteering in a hospital, whether you were helping in a charity, what type of work did you do there? Did you connect with people? Uh, did you handle cash? Um, did you have to leverage your communication, your organizational skills? Um, the other thing that's very important is your soft skills, right? So ability to look people in the eye, the ability to communicate, um, the ability to really listen. Um, that's incredibly important, right? Is to listen, to understand what their needs are and being able to translate those needs into solutions. And then you are here right now uh, at this conference, um, you know, the session here. I hope that every one of you has sent Jennifer, Lena and I and Rui and everybody a LinkedIn message, right? You need to build your network. That is a big part of your career growth is having that coffee chat, right? Reach out and just say, hey, I saw your presentation, you know, would love to get a 50 minute coffee chat or just, um, you know, what is your opinion on something or your advice, right? You have an ability to build a huge network. Um, and unless, you know, you're really wealthy or win the lotto, you'll be working for, well, I'd like to say more than just a decade. So, you know, really leverage your professional networks, really leverage your LinkedIn, um, and don't be afraid to ask questions, right? Don't sit there and, and be unsure. Just, you know, don't give up is what I would have to say and have perseverance. Jennifer, what, what do you have to say? Yeah, I would highlight all of that and, and just reminding that our advisory teams, you know, it's, it's working for Dominion Securities branch, but even more so important, our specific advisory teams, and they're out there in the community, especially some of our smaller locations in, in Canada. They're part of the community. They're at events that are being hosted uh, with some of their charitable partners, uh, with their banking partners. So, you know, look for that in your communities and, and maybe participate and kind of get a sense of what it is that they do if, if this side of the industry really attracts you. I think some of the key points you mentioned about being professional in your interview and highlighting skills that aren't necessarily just job related, but how would you react to a certain situation? All of our business is done uh, as much face to face normally, um, you know, and we again, we know our clients really well, our advisory teams tend to have a slim amount of clients that they service at any given time, it's not thousands and thousands of people. So being used to talking on the phone, being used to sort of being proactive with people, and not just reactive, I think are uh, other important skills to highlight. Lena, anything? I'd like to add, I mean, agree to everything Lorraine and Jennifer just mentioned. Just one thing that just, um, um, and I come across this a lot with my uh, team of recruiters, how can students stand up, stand out amongst other applicants? We still ha have resumes that do not mention that they are either pursuing or have completed an IFIC or a CSE. And it's at that point in time in a 
a recruiter reaches out, that's when they say, oh, we forgot to write it. We forgot to mention it in our resume. So please be mindful, going back to what Lorraine mentioned about your resume, your resume is your first, um, I would say, uh, passport or the first contact or first piece of paper that we are seeing, we are viewing, put in information of your credentials or accreditations you're pursuing. And, and I would probably even ask you to bold and um, you know, bullet point it so then it catches our attention because a lot of times that information gets missed. Um, and people forget to even mention that. So please do remember to put your, every all the certifications you're pursuing, please make a mention of that on the resume. That's all. Um, I've been receiving uh, quite a few questions and I thought uh, based on this particular uh, subject, I, I thought I'd throw out some questions to some of the panelists and, uh, and get your feedback. Um, one of the questions that, uh, that I've received is, does including a reference on a resume immediately benefit my application. I can take that. Um, we used to do references before, but we don't we don't do any references anymore. So I don't think that really makes an impact having it there. And Lorraine, Jennifer, any any difference in that in that response? Okay, next question. Um, so somebody's asking if they start their program, for example, as an accounting, um, an accounting degree, is there room to change from one program to make themselves um, stand out for a role in banking if it's not necessarily their, uh, their current uh, degree or program? I mean, I can I can start with the, a, a bit of an answer there. I, I, I think if you're enjoying that diploma or that degree, I, I wouldn't necessarily change. I, I don't know if there's this, for us, I don't think there's a specific designation we're looking for. I will, and I give this advice to students that I meet all the time, is I had most of my CA credits upon leaving university, and I really wish I had finished it and added that to my resume. I think what, especially accounting for me, always people don't realize that just because you know, just because you take that designation doesn't mean you have to be an accountant, but that number sense and all of the things they tell, teach you and tell you can certainly help in most of our roles, so. Um, and I have a question here. Um, somebody's indicated that there's an industry, um, um, I guess a conversation that goes on uh, among other students that indicates that the goal is to just get in. If I get into the bank, I can then focus and work towards what I really want to do, and what my background really is, is, uh, is uh, structured for. Uh, would you say that's, that's true? And I'll, I'll throw that out to our, our three panelists to, to address. Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say that, you know, the beauty of, you know, the organizations that Jennifer, Lena and I work for are large ecosystems. Uh, meaning there's thousands and thousands of uh, different opportunities um, at our bank. Um, having said that, I think it's important that, um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to just get in, you had like get into the bank, because I think no matter what, you want to make sure that it's the right, not only the right industry for you to work in, but it's also the right culture, right? So I think, you know, Jennifer alluded it to earlier, and I think it's really important that everybody that applies for a role, you know, it's not about just getting a job, right? Like check out the organization. Does that organization align with your values and who you are? Do you see growth within that organization? Does it have the type of jobs that you could see yourself growing into? Um, so yes, I can appreciate why everybody wants to just get a job, but I, I really think um, you also are at the stage of your life where honestly, you have many different opportunities. Jennifer, Lena? If I may, I would say for us, you know, people joining advisory teams, our, our hope is, is that they grow within that role yeah. and that role looks different maybe from when they started to when they finished. I worked in our branches for a long time and I did. I started as a general associate doing, you know, all the things and then eventually started to specialize. I have my CFP. So I started to specialize in that financial planning type area before going into management. Um, so I think there is lots of opportunities for our folks to grow within their career and that's completely appropriate especially if you enjoy working with our clientele I mean 
you know, we have, uh, we have advisors who have, have had the same clients for 30 years, right? They have deep relationships with these people. So I, I, you know, it's not to say that there isn't life beyond a Dominion Securities branch. I don't want you to think that. It's just that, again, that given that entrepreneurial focus, our teams are looking for people who really want to be there and really work towards serving our clients well. And one last question, and then uh, we'll move on to, uh, to, our, um, to our program. Um, what are some key things that managers look for on a resume uh, outside of the IFC and the CSC? What are some, I guess, some areas that uh, the managers tend to hone in on and, and make it a priority to focus in on? I can go first. Um, definitely um, any background, any experience, um, in a client facing role um, because let's face it, we deal with different, different clients. It could be um, clients that are pleasant to deal with, clients that are not so pleasant to deal with. What is our reaction? How have they dealt with those situations, right? So definitely um, someone who has that passion for clients, passion to problem solve, attention to detail, trying to find, being that solution oriented person. Um, so we would look for um, you know, um, areas where they have shown that um, or done, have, some, have some, some sort of an experience with that background. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, Lorraine, Jennifer, anything else to add to that? All right. I don't um, really have much more. I, I think Lena's answer was great. I need to get to, do you want to go to the next uh, slide? And for this question, I'm going to direct this question to Marie Muldowney. Um, what is CSI doing to connect qualified candidates with potential employers for open positions? Well, as you've as you've heard from um, our panelists, the uh, CSC and the IFC are really important when you start. So having those uh, credentials when you go in means that you've got a leg up on anyone else. You're expected to be on the ground running, uh, competent and confident, and those kinds of licenses will give you that confidence and confidence. And you're in a better position to get a role if you already have them. You'll be asked to get them, those licenses, as soon as you get in if you don't have them. So the financial services industry is huge, and, and uh, all of our panelists have talked about the myriad of roles that you can get in financial services. And so, um, we uh, are, the, the industry is, is challenged to be able to fill all the roles that are coming up. And that's the work that uh, Jennifer, Lena, and, um, and Lorraine are, are, are very focused on. And so we want to be able to help our students and our graduates connect with the financial service industry. And we want to help the industry to be able to connect with our graduates. So we're working on a program to start working more closely with our financial services uh, counterparts uh, to be able to help them fill the roles <clears throat> that they have. And so if a bank has a role, uh, they can inform us of the role, inform us where it is geographically, so we can fit someone who's close to that role, and what they require. We in turn can turn to our database of students and graduates and be able to identify potential uh, graduates who meet the requirements of the role. We can then inform graduates that there's a role available and they can apply for that role. We will screen the, the graduates to make sure that they are not currently working in the financial service industry because we're looking for new graduates coming into the industry. It's kind of an intake program. And then the bank will take the recruiting from there. And so we're really working hand in hand with the banks to be able to put together people who have their requirements with roles that are available. Um, if you go to the next uh, slide, we've talked a lot about uh, careers and I think it's really important uh, for you to understand what careers there are. And so to help you out uh, at csi.ca slash career map, you can find our career map, which basically outlines all of the careers that are available in financial services um, and that will provide you with information on the role, uh, what the role is about, how much you can expect to earn, and what requirements you would need to have in order to 
um, have that role. So I noticed, for example, in our Q&A that a number of you are asking, well, if I want this job, what qualifications do I need? Look at the career map, find the role you're looking for, and then be able to identify what kinds of qualifications you need to have those roles. Let me talk just briefly about um, IFC and CSC, because we got a lot of questions about, okay, you've got two licenses here, what is the difference? So the Canadian Securities course is the course that is really designed for people that are going into the um, securities market. So the world that Jennifer is working in, uh, in wealth management. However, it is broad and can be very useful for people who are working in the bank. So many of the banks will also look very favorably at the CSC if you have it. It's two exams and it's really focused on what are the financial instruments that are out there? How do they work? And then how can you put together a portfolio to better serve a client's needs? Because when you get into the securities industry, you'll be asked to be able to give advice to clients on the kinds of securities that would be most appropriate for their goals and financial needs. The Investment Funds in Canada course is a course that's really focused on mutual funds. So those are portfolios put together by the bank um, and are offered through the bank branches and are um, made available to clients, particularly those who are looking for uh, preparing for their retirement and making sure they've got money set aside. And so you'll be providing um, advice to people on what kinds of mutual funds are most appropriate to them. And so the IFC is really for that. And then the CSC is the more uh, sophisticated designation that provides you with a broader breadth to be able to work both in securities and in branch banking. So back to you, Rui, for the questions that you've got. Thank you, Marie. And uh, we do have quite a few questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go through um, some of the some of the ones that I can uh, immediately see that reflects back on a lot of our conversation. I'll direct it to, to the group of panelists. If uh, uh, either one of you want to jump in, or all of you, please, uh, I do welcome uh, responses from everyone. Um, the first question is is a very important one. It's uh, Given the pandemic and this whole COVID, um, the, uh, the, the individual has indicated that they've attended the branch. They've seen that it's quite busy and there doesn't seem to be much time for anything. Has COVID impacted hiring or slowed it down? You know, we're too, we're too polite and Jennifer, no one wants to answer. Jennifer, do you wanna go ahead? <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, I'm going to assume you're talking about a retail bank branch. I don't know if people trip across our Dominion Securities branches as easily, but COVID has definitely changed things. We have some roles that are still in branch. We have a few roles that have to be there um, to, to do certain duties, but most of our associates are typically working at home, which is unusual for us. We consider ourselves a face-to-face, team-oriented kind of industry, so this has been unique uh, for us during the pandemic. Uh, we've been shocked at how many people we're hiring. Uh, it's, it's, we've had a great year um, and we're still hiring. And, and my role is more in training versus recruitment. And I happen to run um, our onboarding training program for our new associates. And we just can't keep up with the demand. So I would say in terms of hiring, it's still uh, full go, need people looking and we're looking. All right. Um, my next uh, question is, uh, I'm new to Canada. Um, I have a background in banking from, uh, from another country, and, and the indicated country is India. I've also completed a, completed a master's degree. Um, will those skills be looked at as transferable? And does adding the CSC increase my, uh, my opportunities to, to get a role, given that my experience is not in Canada? So I can take that. Um, the one thing I want to clarify right at the get-go is that um, we do not differentiate between Canadian or overseas experience. Experience is experience wherever you come from. So what I would like to see is what have you done in banking and do you enjoy the client facing roles or what else do you enjoy? I mean, as, as Lorraine did mention, we, we, it's a big ecosystem. Um, it could be um, on the corporate side, it could be on data analytics, it could be head office roles, it could be banking center roles, it could be within wealth. Where do you see yourself fit 
or what is that journey looks look like for you from what you've you know, with your past experience. So I would never nullify any of your past experience, absolutely transferable skills that you can bring along for the next role, but it all depends on where you want to go. Is that a, a client facing role or is it going to be a behind the desk, number crunching kind of role? It all depends on where you want to go. Okay, uh, this next question, and I, and I think it's a very relevant question because we, we are focusing on two different areas of the bank. We've got the retail bank side and we've also got the wealth. Um, how could someone um, basically get to uh, experience or uh, understand the different cultures between the two different lines of business if they are looking to apply for a role? Because they are very much different. Is, 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 there is the networking part, but is there something that they can do differently to kind of just uh, get more climatized to, to the two, two different areas? Yeah, I, I would definitely suggest, you know, um, you know, Jennifer mentioned this earlier as well is, for instance, a banking center, like I would actually go visit a banking center, I would actually go, you know, speak to someone there. Um, if you have an opportunity where you can even work part time, you know, an opportunity where you can maybe just even work as a, a CSR or an associate at uh, one of the financial institutions just to get a sense definitely networking and having coffee chats uh, with people on both sides, uh, whether it's in wealth or retail, uh, will give you a sense of kind of what the day-to-day -day is like. I agree. The cultures are definitely different and we, we really always phrase ourselves as this entrepreneurial type culture. People who work for advisors, the advisors are expected to grow their practice the way they want each of our teams will look a little bit differently they serve different clients too again because they've got a slim down type of uh, high net worth business their their clientele might look dramatically different too so i would say going to our website even and not just looking at the branch but looking at the different advisors and getting a sense of, of who they serve and how they do it would be would be helpful Um, this next question, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists, but I'm also going to ask uh, Marie to jump in after uh, uh, after uh, uh, the responses received. Um, the question is, is how transferable are skills and certification between the different lines of business? So uh, they've they've indicated retail banking to wealth. So I've got uh, I've had about four uh, four individuals ask the same question. So um, from a employer perspective, I'll have um, our panelists respond, and then I would ask if Marie would like to, to jump in and, and discuss how our courses are kind of uh, designed and, and maybe uh, catering to, to, to the industry. I mean, I can start in terms of um, the courses, like in terms of transferring from retail to wealth. If, if the only designations you have are IFIC and MFDA type registrations, we would you, need you to relicense. So uh, unfortunately you would then be needing to do your CSC and your CPH because they are very, I, our regulator uh, is very specific about that. I don't know that those designations wouldn't hurt you in terms of at least getting you probably through the exams a little easier because you, you're used to it. It's just more they those specific designations are not transferable to us. Um, I, I think hopefully that helped. I would add to that. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. You nailed it again. Um, I think moving over from retail banking over to wealth, I think it gets a little more complex and it's more related to more affluent clients, right? Where retail banking would be um, your day-to-day -day, having a portfolio, of course, it's it's complex too. But um, going back to what you mentioned, the, the, the certifications would be different for both. And Marie, from uh, from our uh, from our training perspective, uh, yeah, I th I think what people try to do is is as much as possible do the CSC, and then they've got both avenues open to them. They can work in a branch, and they can work in the security side. But many people go through a program if they're in college or university, and part of their college program is the investment funds in Canada course. So go with it and then start to look at where you want to be and what are the qualifications. So the career map will give you an idea of what qualifications you need. And you can already start to put together the kinds of courses you need. As much as possible, if you can, get into the financial services industry, get in somewhere, 
um, to get yourself some experience. And if you haven't got that kind of experience, but you're working in a restaurant or you're working in um, a, a service industry or retail, um, use that industry as a way to build your, your communication skills, to be able to look clients in the eye, practice how you're going to deal with people, how you get to their needs, what they're looking for. You're doing the, the same thing, whether you're trying to sell someone a suit and what kind of suit they're looking for and what they need. And if you're trying to build their financial future, what is it they need? You need to ask the same questions. You need to get to know your client. So a lot of the, the skills in combination with uh, your certifications is how you're able to deal with clients, how you're able to speak. And that's where these client-facing roles become really important. Uh, Marie, I have one more question for you. And uh, I'm asking this question to you, Marie, because it's, it's independent of both wealth and retail. Is the CSC better than the IFC or is the IFC better than the CSC? What is the difference? Okay, so the difference, um, I think we're saying it all in different ways. Um, the difference is really around the level of knowledge and the level of sophistication of the products you're going to be able to deal with. If you're going to be dealing with mutual funds, that is funds that have been put together by the bank or by other financial institutions that are, are set funds that put together Canadian funds or um, uh, ESG funds, uh, economical funds, uh, green funds, that kind of thing, you'll want to be able to explain those funds to the clients. And that's and to prepare their retirement, look at what they have, look at how they can save, look at how they can travel and prepare their children's education and retire and the whole thing. It's, it's how you pull together your portfolio. So the IFC, uh, Investment Funds in Canada, of course, is really designed for that first level branch that is going to be dealing in those kinds of um, uh, instruments. If you're going to be dealing in securities, you're going to be selling stocks and bonds and more sophisticated financial services instruments, portfolios of that you're putting together or that your, your bank is putting together, your securities industry is putting together, then you need to have the CSC because you need to have the knowledge and skills to be able to deal with that level of sophisticated product. And then you need to have the conduct the practice handbook because you need to know what things you can say and not say. There's a lot of confidentiality, uh, interest of the client and that kind of thing that you need to learn. And then you need to learn more about wealth management. So wealth management essentials, because you're going to be dealing with people who are more wealthy and who are trying to put together a portfolio, may have a business, may have um, a portfolio of, of stocks and bonds, they may have um, other things that, and you have to be able to put that together for them. And there are sophisticated programs that go right up to very wealth, very high level wealth management for high net worth clients. Perfect. Um, my next question is, is back to the panelists. Um, there's a lot of people that graduate at the same time. Um, there are at any time 50 to 100 people applying. How many out of 100 people that have uh, certification are normally pushed as, as a priority or to the top of the list? Does that, does that completion of the IFC and CSC help boost my, my rating of uh, my resume submission? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry, go sorry, ahead, go ahead Lore. <laughs> So I, um, I would say um, in, in, this, in the FSR role or ongoing roles that you look at, the flexibility to work is very important according to Banking Center. So you may have the IFC, you may have the CSE, but if you let us know that you're only available for a 20 hour per week role, not the role for you. So I would, we would preferably ask, that's our first question in fact, you know, are you flexible to work at our Banking Center locations? I mean, we don't work crazy hours, we work regular hours, but does that align with is it convenient for you? And the next weighted question is the uh, certification. So I would definitely um, say that would bring you up if you are flexible to work and you're open, open and available to work um, at, the, at the, the locations with the right timings. I, I agree. The CSC to us, I think, just shows commitment that you're willing to learn about the industry. So um, I think it definitely is get weighted higher if you've got it already, for sure. Uh, Lena, following on your um, your last shared uh, uh, piece of advice on uh, being flexible, um, staying with that, 
is there anything such as that that would create a red flag on a resume or cover letter or application that's submitted? Is there anything that stands out as a, you know, this is probably not a good candidate? Um, the moment the recruiter sees an IFIC or a CSE on a resume, uh, that will warrant a call. And it's during the conversation, uh, we definitely find out if the, about the flexibility. So having that certification definitely would warrant a call. Because in that call, we understand what is intention, what are the short-term, long-term plans, where are they going with this? So all of those conversations take place. Jennifer, this question is for you. Is there a resume that you receive on the wealth side that does not necessarily stand out as a wealth uh, resume, more on a retail banking side? And does that get submitted between the different lines of business to the appropriate uh, hiring managers? Um, yeah, I mean, I think our, our recruitment team really scans uh, all resumes for those types of designations. So if they applied to a wealth role, but only had IFIC or MFDA, they would, I'm quite confident they'd pass it along to their partners on the banking retail side. Um, I think the only thing that maybe stands out is maybe, again, somebody who's not willing to be client facing. We, we really are focused on client facing roles. It's not to say that we don't have non-client facing roles. It's just you know, have met people or they've indicated on their resume, you know, they want to be, uh, you know, um, you know, the, uh, like, I want to design a portfolio or something like that. They, I, I think that versus our challenge, and I'm going to go off on a tiny tangent for a second. I think the challenge that we typically get for resumes is, is people think that they want to come to us because they actually more want to get in capital markets um, where they're dealing more on the investment banking side or the portfolio or the trading side. And um, while we do trades and deal with portfolios, we're still dealing with retail type clients, what we, we would call our retail clients or so individual Canadians, not um, institutions themselves. So I think we actually more get resumes going that way where their long-term career is I want to be a trader and uh, we don't necessarily... Uh, uh, we're not part of that business directly. Um, this next question, I'm going to direct it to Marie. Um, the question is, is how can I learn more about uh, the available uh, roles in the industry and the descriptions of expectations once I'm in that role? Is there something that CSI provides? Well, I can suggest a couple of things. Obviously, our career map is, is probably the easiest way for you to start understanding what are the roles. And there are, are roles that are in retail banking, there are roles in securities, roles that are in insurance, and roles that are in sort of estate planning and trust for, for people that are planning the, what happens next um, as, they, as they age. Um, but also, I mean, look at job, uh, look at job applications. Look at, look at what banks are asking for. If you look at what banks are asking for, they will describe the roles they're looking for. And that'll give you insight into what, what language the bank uses, what, what terms the bank uses, what qualifications they're looking for, what qualities, uh, what competencies they're looking for, and try and reflect them in the roles. Think about what you have done and how what you have done reflects those roles. So I think between the two, it gives you a fairly good idea of what's out there in the industry. And I've got uh, one final question. Uh, I mean, that, that there's quite a few. Um, this question is uh, from a few people. Uh, they've indicated that I've, I submit my resume, but then I don't know who I should reach out to to follow up on this status. Is there something or someone that, that I can reach out to in order to get confirmation of, uh, of the uh, resume review? And I'll turn that over to the panelists. Yeah, that, that's a good question. So, um, you know, when you do submit your resume, definitely you get a response back with, um, you know, that we've acknowledged that we've received the resume. And generally, uh, you know, especially in our urban areas, we sometimes get, you know, 100, 125 resumes. Um, and even if you were to use a technology such as a resume screener, we're fairly meticulous in going through our resumes. So, um, I would just say, first of all, just be patient um, because we do have fairly high volumes right now. Um, but having said that, um, generally on the response, there's usually like an email that you can reach out to. Jennifer, I'm not sure about the, the process on your end. 
Yeah, I would say it's probably very similar. I mean, I, I know I've, I've talked to recruiters where they say, yeah, they're getting hundreds of resumes per role. And, and, you know, I think that being measured about what you really want could be important. Are you applying for every role? Or are you applying for specific roles? Um, I do know that can help. Like if you're really focused on wealth, then apply for wealth roles and then understand why you want that role. Um, and I'm sure there's a contact uh, button or an email that, that you can re respond and maybe add that context. Um, I do know they keep meticulous notes as well about people that they've met and they will sort of put people forward for, for other roles that might, that might align um, at times if they, if they are hiring for multiple places at the same time. So, um, I, I mean, our branch networks, they're probably little pockets where they, um, they're always looking for people. So they will reach out to each other a little bit. Um, you know, just to be like, oh, have you interviewed anybody? We're looking for somebody. So, um, you know, a lot of times our, our local branches are kind of doing, again, on the well side, are kind of doing that individually uh, because they are so involved, invested in the hiring process. Um, you know, they don't, they rely on the recruiters, but it's not just about the recruiters. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to speak on behalf of all of our branches out there, but I think if you're really keen to get into Dominion Securities, you know, dropping off a resume or emailing, you know, finding who the contact is in that branch and, and sending it to to them doesn't go amiss either, um, like, especially if you've got your designations. Mm -hmm. and, and I would also suggest if you happen to be, you know, that kind of maybe silver medalist that maybe just didn't get the role, you know, reach out to the hiring manager uh, that you were interviewed with just to say, you know, what are some of the things that would have, you know, landed me that role so that you can improve on it. Um, and I would definitely, again, you have, once you've had an interview either with um, a talent acquisition partner or with a hiring manager, keep them as part of your network, right? Like follow up with them um, because to Jennifer's point, we're always looking for, uh, for people. Okay. Um, I just want to kind of uh, just chime in. I've, I've heard all the, all this great feedback that, uh, that's been provided. And I can tell you when I started in banking 25 years ago, um, this opportunity wasn't there. I, I got into banking thinking one thing, and then I spent 15 years and then an additional 10 years um, just enjoying my career in the financial services industry. I was always on the client facing side. And immediately you will know if this is the right role for you. I immediately understood that as long as I had that mentality of being uh, self-employed and understanding that, yes, I work for a particular bank, but these are my clients and I can do as much or as little as I want, but putting in the effort and continuing to grow in, in, in my knowledge of the products and the, and the industry and financial planning and all that discovery that, that you can spend time with your clients on, it never ever felt like I worked a day in, in, in my career. Um, I loved going into to, to the branches um, I've worked with the Dominion Securities folks uh, in, in my career, and it's just a pleasant environment when you truly, truly enjoy your job. Um, and I can tell you that I've never regretted a single day that I've spent in, in, in the world of banking. And I would highly, highly recommend that uh, you submit your resumes. Um, you, once you are in, you will realize that your career can start here and it can end up in a completely different area, including senior management, and promotions are so widely uh, given at the bank for performance that it's, it, it's, it's really nice to, to, to be part of a team and getting that recognition that you don't necessarily get in other, in other organizations. So I do welcome you to, to reach out um, to, to both uh, our panelists, reach out to us here at CSI for support and questions that, that, that we can address and we will uh, definitely reach out. Um, we have got uh, to the end of our um, presentation. I wanna thank Jennifer, uh, Lena and Lorraine for joining us and providing us all of that great feedback. I wanna thank Marie for providing us that industry knowledge in what CSI does. And I wanna, I wanna thank everybody who participated and joined the session. You've taken the first step into a great career. And I assure you from somebody who's been in it for 25 years, I would never regret a single day. And with that, I would like to call the session to an end. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining.